Well, greetings, Cloverdale Baptist Church, and welcome to Examining the Scriptures for September of 2021. We're so thankful that you're helping us to become a biblically saturated church and that we can memorize God's Word together and be those who delight in His Word. Today, Colossians 1, 3, and 4, it's one of my favorite prayers of Paul in the entire Bible, and it's in a book that was written to a family of Gentile Christians and to us by virtue of the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. This family of Christians was in Turkey, modern Turkey, and really a, a city that was close to Ephesus. In fact, that's where we think Paul went to Ephesus and then through that connected with these people. A church that had incredible leadership in history, Arrhenius, uh, Clement of Alexandria, Tertullian, Origen, and Eusebius, and, and others. In, incredible pedigree. And it's a church that Paul blesses, and he blesses it for a number of reasons, but in his opening prayer, which we want to study on, he blesses it for three specific reasons, and in actual fact, we're going to look at two of those today. So I want to look with you at Colossians 1, 3, and 4, challenging you to memorize and understand these verses. It starts off with, we always thank God. Now, Paul was in prison at this moment, and, and I think this is so important for us to remember. There's a thankfulness for the Christian because of the gospel and the gospel call on life that supersedes every single circumstance you're in. And so if you just want to stop there and meditate on that, it's probably helpful because so often we make our thanksgiving dependent on our situation rather than dependent on what God has done for us in calling us to himself. So we always thank God. Now, this label is incredibly important in terms of the deity of Christ. The Father, that's talking about God the Father, and then this identity of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, sometimes people think Lord Jesus Christ is just the name of Jesus. It's his first name and his middle name and then his last name, when in actual fact, Lord is an identifier and Christ is an identifier and Jesus is his name. Jesus means Yahweh saves. Lord means master, the one we submit to completely, and Christ means the Messiah or the anointed one. And so he's thanking God, the God who is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, a definite equality with the Father, when we pray for you. Now, for Paul, one of the ways he showed his love was prayer, absolute dependence. We want to be a church that prays. And in fact, if I just emphasize that, that prays scripture, that learns how to pray from the model of God's word. And this is one of the most powerful models in the Bible in Colossians chapter 1. Then he says, well, why are we thanking God? Now, this is important because his thanksgiving is to God for something that's going on in their lives. And what is it that's going on? Well, he's heard something. He's heard something via a letter or a messenger or something. What has he heard? He's heard about two things, their faith in Jesus and their love that they have for their saints. And if we were to go on, which I would encourage you to do if you want to memorize more, you'll find that it's based in hope, kind of that great three things that define the Christian life. But here he's thanking God because he's heard that they have a faith in Christ Jesus. Again, remember this Christ is a describer, the Messiah. Jesus is his name, Yahweh saves, and of love that you have for all the saints, the local church. I just want to break that up to show you that we're dependent upon God for our growth. That's why he's thanking God for what's going on in their lives from a sanctification perspective. It's God who's producing it. And he's thanking God for two specific things that I want to ask if these things identify you. The first is faith. Faith not only for salvation, although most commentaries in Colossians 1 would say this is exclusively for salvation. I think it's more. I think it's living life as though God exists, having your faith in God supersede everything else going on around you. You walk by faith and not by sight. So you know God is real. You live in his presence and you live for his glory. You're living by faith. And then the second descriptor that he's thankful for is the love this is love as defined by Jesus, self-sacrificial love that you have for all the saints. Here now specifically meaning local church. One of the things you'll see as you start to watch for it very carefully in the New Testament is this constant emphasis on the love we're to have for those that God has placed in our family. Oh yes, love beyond, love for those in all over the world that name the name of Jesus, but the one another specifically given so that we can be those who honor Jesus by our faith that's lived out with a worldview that knows him and our love that's self-sacrificial and choosing the best of others. 
if you want to be someone that the Apostle Paul would thank God for, how can you do that? Well, it's God that produces it, but you can pursue it as well. So may I encourage you to memorize this verse, to pray this prayer of thanksgiving in any circumstance, whether you're in prison or pain or enjoying the privileges of living in Canada. And as you pray in total submission to the Father and the Son, in the power of the Spirit, thank God for a faith that shows that you live as though God is real because He is, and a love that's an overflow of your experience of His love. Because when you love in this way, you display the beauty and impact and power of the gospel. And we become more and more a gospel-impacted people. Colossians 1, 3 to 4, memorize it. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints. Amen and amen. That was Examining the Scriptures for September 2021.